I want to talk about something that is one of the most charged events I've ever witnessed as an adult. And there was a time in my life when I was a policeman. And I was a rookie. It was the first day out of the academy. Literally the first day on the job at Swing Shift. It's a Tuesday afternoon because when you're a rookie, you get good days off. And we get a call, 911, shots fired, lights and sirens. Six of us show up, run upstairs, and there's a woman standing there with a gun, handgun. I'd never seen anybody shot. The gentleman, who's now deceased, his eye and back of his head was blown out. He was laying on the floor. She had caught him having an affair. I remember thinking, I get crimes of passion now. That sense of betrayal, when that hits you, you know what I'm talking about. If you felt it, you've experienced it, you know it. And there's stories all over the news about people who find their partner cheating in a hotel room or someplace and they lose their mind. That's our talk. The power of disappointment, betrayal, and affairs. And the word is, I hate him. I hate her. Hate is a very strong word because it carries nuclear emotional energy. It can change the landscape of anybody's life if it touches it. And there's a number of points I want to go over. Now, I know I'm on thin, thin ice here. If your partner had an affair on you and you were left for another man, another woman, it's difficult. But courage is hearing the truth and the truth will always unload your anger and set you free. So you're not carrying around your X factor your resentments, that ball and chain. And the first one is, your relationship did not end because of an affair. The affair might have been the final straw, but a good relationship does not have room for an emotional affair or a sexual affair. It simply doesn't. And most people I have found blame the relationship ending on the affair or that relationship was good until the affair. I question that because research doesn't bear out and the truth is, an affair won't ruin your relationship. It may open it up, get a discussion going, but it won't end it. You and your partner ended it. Number two, relationships are more complicated than a symptom of infidelity. Now, I'm not recommending infidelity is good, but relationships are much more complicated. And what is the, relate, what is the affair or the betrayal covering up? You don't get along, you have different values, you've grown apart. What's it really saying that neither one of you are looking at? And I need to say this, affairs, when they're discovered, are a nuclear blast to your heart. And I'm not minimizing your pain, your suffering, but I also want to give you a bigger perspective. Let's look at it from 34,000 feet rather than from three feet away. It's a whole different look. And number four, anger is good in the short term, it can mobilize you to do stuff. Long term, it can be your death sentence. There's an old saying, you can be angry at someone and hope it kills them, but it's like drinking poison and hoping it affects them. It just ruins you. And that's what long term anger does. And number five, it takes courage to end a relationship. And many times people don't end the relationship and that's where the insanity comes in. People get crazy. It has no regard for intellectual capacity, economics, nothing. When people feel wronged, people act crazy. Taking action, many times, productive action, is a way not to let the relationship spiral out of control, hurt the kids, the relatives, if you're dating somebody, all the people involved. And number six, when you feel like you've been betrayed by an affair or betrayed, write two letters. One, write a letter and use third person. Talk about your disappointment. Disappointment is under anger. And the second letter is write about your anger. It sounds contradictory, but they're both very powerful. Disappointment is how you really feel your anger is what you can't believe happened. 
If you do the exercise, you'll know what I'm talking about. And number seven, people talk about forgiveness. Many times people feel like it's unforgivable. Okay, then detach, unplug, disconnect from this person. I wanna to read to you seven things to do. One, a way to detach is your partner's behavior isn't about you. It might be directed at you, but it's not about you. Your ex's behavior isn't about you. Number two, you control how you feel and act, not how your partner thinks or feels about you. You control how you feel and act. Number three, stop giving your ex-partner or husband or wife permission to hurt you. You have the ability to hear their comments and also to realize that's not the whole story. Number four, no one can define you or decide who and what you are other than you. It sounds simple until you're in the middle of heartbreak. Because for years that person felt like your best friend. You're gonna get married or you were married, you were dating, they were support and now they're gone. You still define who you are. Next one is accept the relationship change. This is probably the most important one of all of them. Detaching is accepting the relationship has changed. Sometimes that means changing the pictures in the house, changing houses, changing zip codes, but most importantly, change how you feel. The relationship has changed. It's a hard one. But accepting that you may, will help you to be free because you probably are no longer married, not dating this person, or involved. Know your emotional triggers with your ex. Know what sets you off. Don't give them the keyboard. You hold it. Or lock the keyboard so they can't press it. And lastly, develop strict emotional boundaries with your ex. And I need to say this, and you may think I've lost my mind because I'm saying this. Don't have sex with your ex-partner or your ex-wife or husband, because if you do, you're still with them. Breakups start when you stop having sex, typically. If you're still sleeping with your partner, you're not broken up. You're going through a rough time. If you're still sexually involved with them, it's something else. It's not a breakup. I'm not sure what it is, but it's not a breakup. If indeed you are doing that, think through where you want the relationship to go. Because if you're sexually involved, you're still involved. The other parts imply that you're not. So that's part of detaching. And if you're still involved on that level, rethink what you're doing, because you may not want to be broken up. I'm gonna read two quotes to you. One is by Catherine Ponder, psychologist. This is verbatim her quote. When you hold resentment toward another, you're bound to that person or condition by, emo by an emotional link that is stronger than steel. Forgiveness and detachment is the only way to dissolve that link and get free. Detachment and forgiveness is the only way to dissolve that link and be free. The next quote is by Dr. Gerald Japlonsky. The game of guilt and blame is tempting one to play in every relationship, whether it be personal, professional, or romantic. If there are any rewards to be found in the game, there's self-punishment and feelings of separation. The game of guilt and blame always lead to you punishing yourself and you feeling more isolated. I encourage you, if you're really getting divorced and breaking up with someone, focus on detaching. 